address. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Museum of History and Industry. Feel free to take a seat, and um, we'll get going. And I know that we've got a big crowd this evening, so we thank you for your patience as we all get seated here. My name is Leonard Garfield, and I'm the director of MOHAI, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to a very special evening at the museum, uncovering the history of Seattle's black community with very special guests, Mary Henry and Josephine Stokes. Please welcome Mary Henry and Josephine Stokes. This is going to be a history-making evening, so we're absolutely honored to have you here. Tonight's program is a partnership, one in a long series of wonderful partnerships between the Black Heritage Society of Washington State and the Museum of History and Industry. BHS and MOHAI have been partners for almost a quarter of a century. In fact, Carol, I was looking it up, 1996 we started our partnership, so it's been an amazing time. We have done so many, yeah, let's give it up for that partnership. We have done so many fantastic collaborations, but I think none represents it better than the kinds of program that you'll enjoy this evening and the absolutely amazing exhibit that has inspired tonight's program, Seattle on the Spot, the photographs of Al Smith. And I have to uh, acknowledge that the son of Al Smith and one of the co-curators of the exhibit, Butch Smith, is here this evening. Butch, could you just raise your hand or, there he is in the back. Butch, I know you know that, but I want everyone to know your dad was a member of both BHS and MOHAI, and he was a beloved friend of all of us. And so it's just wonderful to do a partnership around his work. And both BHS and MOHAI members and volunteers have worked very hard for very many years to conserve the amazing photographs of Al to better understand them, all resulting in the exhibit that you'll uh, have a chance to see if you haven't seen it yet, and resulting I always tell Butch I like to hold this up, this incredible book called Seattle on the Spot, which is absolutely beautiful. The exhibit is on display until June 17th, so if you haven't seen it, you'll have a, you'll have a chance to see it. And the book is on sale right now in our bookstore, so if you want to buy a copy this evening, that's available. Um, but it's absolutely um, a wonderful collaboration between these two great organizations. Now, before we get going, I have a couple housekeeping measures. The restrooms are beyond the pink tow truck. They are, we always say that. I think that's just great. Um, refreshments are available in the back, and I think, Betsy, you're serving throughout the evening, I believe, so take advantage of that. You can have your drinks right here on the floor of the museum. And the bookstore, if you are in, interested in looking at the book more closely, is in the back corner over there. Well, tonight it's my pleasure to introduce our two hosts for the evening, who will in turn introduce our special guests. Stephanie Johnson Tolliver, who is right here, there you go, is a board member of the Black Heritage Society. She's a lifelong resident of Seattle. This is what I love. Your family history dates for 100 years in Seattle. Yep. And I'm sorry, there are not many people who can trace their family history 100 years in our community. Uh, in addition to her leadership role at BHS, Stephanie is also the program manager at the Northwest African American Museum. So all the great programs up there, Stephanie is responsible for. So thank you, Stephanie, for being here. And joining Stephanie as co-host over here is Carol Peoples Proctor. Carol is a second generation Seattleite. <laughs> Carol is the president of BHS and she's a life member of the Black Heritage Society. And in her other life, Carol is a real estate broker um, who devotes uh, her time not only to being a fabulous business person but an incredible community volunteer and I love seeing your picture and your name on the signs when I drive around town so <laughs> it's good to have both of you here please join me in welcoming our co-hosts Stephanie Johnson Tolliver and Carol Peoples Proctor <laughs> I'm so used to standing to a podium <laughs> okay so I'm gonna get started welcome again the black uh, Heritage Society is so proud to be in a partnership with MOHAI. Um, and what better, uh, um, excuse me, I'm a little nervous. Uh, what better project than the Al Smith on the Spot exhibit? And so he was a life member. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so a lot of the members of Black Heritage Society have been instrumental in helping identify photos, along with Chris Jones, John Peoples, who am I missing? Uh, Jerry Cook, uh, Stephanie uh, Tolliver. Um, there's been a few people, and tonight you might be somebody that can identify photos, so that's an opportunity. So BHS started in 1977 in the home of Don 
and Esther Mumford. And then um, it's been in existence ever since and we're dedicated to acquiring, exhibiting, and preserving black culture in Washington State. And so if you would like to become a member, we do have memberships. And if you would like to donate to the society, we're open to seeing what it is that you have to give us. Don't let stuff go moldy in your basement and your attic and just let it be thrown out if God forbid something happened to you. We would love to take a look at it around African American culture. Um, as you can see, Jackie Lawson is not here tonight. And she had an illness and she's doing great, but she was still unable to come. And the blessing is we were able to ask Josephine Stokes, would she please replace her tonight? And we're so grateful. So now we are going, I'm going, I have the pleasure of introducing our panelists, which is Mary Henry and Josephine Stokes. And believe me, this could be the Josephine Stokes and Mary Henry uh, program, yes. but <laughs> we just don't have enough time to do that tonight. Um, so Mary Henry, that rough, tough cream puff, she is a, <laughs> ooh, I tell you, she's tough, but she is so accomplished, and she is one of the fabrics of the foundation of the black community in Seattle. Mary is the mother of four children, all successful, she'll tell you, and I'm sure they are. Seven grandchildren, eight great-grandchildren. She's a former Seattle Public School librarian, an archivist at Epiphany Church. She's a contributing writer for History Link and BlackPass.org, a past board member for both Seattle Education Foundation and the Association of King County Historical Organizations. And in 2016, she just received their Legacy Board Member Award and she was also a member of Seattle Landmarks. She's the past editor of the Black Heritage Society's newsletter. She's also a life member. And she's a member of Seattle Greater Chapter, Greater Seattle Chapter of the Lynx. She's a Madison Park resident and a blogger, an avid walker, a member of La Dames, which is a 60-year-old club that's been playing bridge, but they also do social and civic activities, along with a, a member of Idlewilds, another bridge club that's been together over 60 years. And she is the author of Tribute, Seattle's Public Places Named for Black People. And that is just an awesome book. If you haven't heard about it, you will be hearing about it tonight. Mary Henry. Mm -hmm. How do you spell Josephine Antoinette Stratum Stokes? <laughs> Grace, intelligence, style, persistence, and beauty. Mrs. Stokes is a perfect example of what lucky is. Hard work meets opportunity. There's so many firsts in their family. <clears throat> she was one of the first black elementary school teachers, and her husband was the first black uh, in King County to be elected to the state legislator in the 50s, and a black appointed to the Seattle District Court in uh, 1968. There's so many, we, again, we could have a whole evening about the Stokes family. Uh, Mrs. Stokes' first husband was Howard Wooten, and he died in a construction project uh, for the uh, Dearborn Bridge. Together, Judge Stokes and Mrs. Stokes blended their Vicky and Andre and then they had their Stephanie, but they're, but every, <laughs> I didn't say that right, but um, a beautiful blended family. She also mm -hmm. has four grands and six greats, which is awesome. You know, she was born in 1924. I know that's, you can't believe it, because she certainly doesn't um, seem to be of that age, but she is. She graduated from Clark College in Atlanta, Georgia, in, uh, with a BS in home economics. She moved to Seattle in 44 with her mom, and later she came back with her husband in the 50s, Judge Charles Stokes. And she got her teaching credentials at the UW, and she's been publicly recognized 
for her distinguished career in teaching, being a librarian, a reading specialist. She was also featured in Essence Magazine in 2005 as looking great at any age. She's <laughs> and she's a life member of Delta Sigma Theta, Jack and Jill Incorporated. She's a charter member of C the Greater Seattle Chapter Lynx and the Negro Council of Women, BHS, Black Heritage Society, La Dames, and uh, Idlewilds, Bridge Clubs, Josephine mm -hmm. Stokes. Mm -hmm. So Stephanie, it's your turn. Uh, I know, it seems kind of funny we're this tag team, but you're <laughs> way over there, so I'm not sure how, mm -hmm. <laughs> how that works. But uh, again, I am so happy, as usual, to see all the familiar face faces, but new faces too, and be here representing the Black Heritage Society of Washington State. Uh, I always say that I think they used a little bit of magic on me to, to get me to step up to join the board. But once I joined the board at BHS, uh, it just means everything to me and working with other board members. I see a few that are here tonight, um, Addie up front and Carol. So thank you everyone for coming out and helping us to honor the Al Smith Collection and be here with uh, Josephine and Mary. Um, just to sort of set things up for you a little bit, we're going to, um, Carol and Josephine, Mary and I are going to have a little conversation, um, go down memory lane just a little bit, uh, looking at some slides, some photos photographs that were selected from the Al Smith collection. So we know there were thousands of images within the Al Smith collection. And when we had to select 20 to 22 of those images, I think I, I probably got through maybe three of the albums um, with Howard Geske. I saw Howard here tonight and, um, oh, there was Howard. Yeah. It, I, and every time I'd flip a page, I'd spend, you know, like 10, 20 minutes on just one page. I, it was amazing, and I can't wait to get back down there and search through more. So we've selected uh, 20 to 22 images. Um, we'll stop and chat just a little bit as we go along. We may engage you a little bit um, with some of these photographs, but we also want you to be paying attention so that if you see someone in these photographs that you recognize or a place or um, the event, to please jot it down because that's something that's really important that's gonna support the Mohai archive of this collection is to be able to put names, places, faces to the images, which many of them do not have. So uh, I guess we could get started. We will have some time at the end too for a little question and answer period. So we can get going and um, before I start flipping through the slides, I want everyone to just sort of check this one out. You've probably been checking it out though since you've been sitting here in your seats for the last, I don't know, 10 minutes or so. <laughs> but uh, it really spoke to me when I saw it because it seemed like such a contradiction. Do you see me kind of going like this? Because I am. Um, it, it is kind of a contradiction to me because here are these really beautiful, um, the, these ladies and gentlemen um, are here all dressed up and fancy. They've got purses, like gloves, pearls, you know, little strappy shoes, and then these crazy hats. I'm like, I'm like, why? You know, what, what is the story here? What is it behind this? And so that's the kind of thing that we're going to be um, delving into tonight and pulling some of the stories out of the images. Uh, we only know in this particular image, a couple people here, like we know this is Clara Winston, mm -hmm. but, um, and there's several others here too that Carol had called out, but please Bernice pay attention. Christ. Okay. 
Ernie's and um, jot those names down for us if, if you see someone familiar or if you know what this event was. Mm -hmm. We've been um, asking around, like, you know, where were they going? Where were they at? Was this um, a special function of a women's group? So please help us. Okay, here we go. Ah, these lovely ladies. They are awesome. Um, here on, oops, oh, that was supposed to be the little green button. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> okay, I better pay attention. And I have my glasses on. Oh, no. Uh, this could be Mr. Toad's wild ride. Uh, this, the, the lady on your, on your right is Marjorie Polk Sotero and her sister, Catherine. And the Soteros, or the Polk sisters, were very instrumental in the USO uh, here in Seattle, uh, particularly Marjorie. And I know when I uh, was looking at this image with, with you, Josephine, you, you remember her, mm -hmm. right? What do you remember about Josephine? Well, one thing or I Josephine, remember, she, um, she was Stephanie's uh, scout. Uh, leader. <laughs> um, Stephanie's my daughter right there, so uh, she, we remember her as that. But the other thing that I remember that she was over one of the clubs uh, for the Army uh, here. And when I came, the Urban League tried to get me to get a job with her, but I was only here for temporary for the summers, and so I, I did not um, work with her. But those are the two things that I remember about. Yeah, I, I remember sitting down um, in the living room with Jackie Lawson. And uh, Jackie and I were talking about her book on Camp Jordan, Camp George Jordan, and how important these, the USO parties and functions and events were that were off and away from the camp for the servicemen. So I don't know how many of you uh, knew about or kn knew of Camp Jordan. Um, we talked just a little bit about it. And Mary, you recalled Camp Jordan when we, you know, uh, we didn't talk about Camp Jordan, Camp George Jordan. Um, maybe it was Josephine and I who were sitting yeah. in the living room. Where, mm -hmm. Okay, so Camp George Jordan uh, was at the foot of Spokane Street. Um, right between First and Second Avenue. And it was a segregated camp. So you had the black um, servicemen on one side of the street and the white servicemen were on the opposite side of the street. And it was an embarkation point. So there was, um, the servicemen were being trained and shipped and moving between, um, I think it was Fort Lawton and Fort Lewis at the time, but um, it was really important for them to, to get off um, the camp and campgrounds and to go to special events like this one where they had sing-alongs, uh, there were dances, um, and the dances were at the Y. Some of them were, yeah. Uh, I remember uh, going to the Y on Saturday evening. Christine Mead was over the Y at the time. And uh, I remember going there uh, for, for dancing with the, uh, at that time it, it was, I don't see any on there, but mm -hmm. um, it was interracial. Uh, they had different uh, races of service people mm -hmm. at the Y. And we danced with anybody who asked us to dance. <laughs> <laughs> Kept us <Right>. very busy. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, uh, so, so you didn't have a dance card, huh? You, yeah. <laughs> like, right. And was this the downtown Y? Because was it the downtown Y? It was the downtown Y. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I know that um, there were also parties and dances during that right. period at the Madison. Yeah. East yeah. Madison Y, mm -hmm. as well, because Jackie would um, talk about the East Madison Y and uh, the parties and dances that were there. And many of those functions were USO mm -hmm. dances. 
I remember once um, one of my classmates from, at that time I was in college in, in Atlanta, and I would come up here in the summer uh, and get a job. And one of my classmates from Atlanta came, he was in the service. And then uh, uh, one of uh, my friends, I was from Selma, Alabama, and one of the young men that I was in high school with came, uh, so I got to see two people that I knew. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, well it looked like it was a pretty fun time to be had by all. And uh, here is a, a photo um, where Marjorie, um, again, is not at a dance, but at a house party. Here she is right here. And there are friends and maybe some family members here in this photo. I wanted to kind of give a nice transition from some of our USO images to begin to start to talk about some of the, the house parties that were groups, social groups, and that were functions with couples and individuals in the central area. I know one of the questions that I had um, asked both Mary and Josephine when we were talking about photos was, uh, did Al, was he invited to these parties and events? The expectation was that he would come and photograph the parties? You know, I saw him at, at most of the parties. I did not know whether he was invited, but I know <laughs> that he was at just about every party that I went to. <laughs> and I don't know whether he was uh, taking pictures of certain people or whether he was just taking pictures of the groups. So it's nice that now we have the collection of mm -hmm. pictures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I believe that at the time, and I've heard others say that um, while Al was snapping these photos, mm -hmm. that uh, he probably had no idea of what he was doing to contribute to uh, the documentation and the history of the black culture in Seattle and uh, the central area. He was just there, um, it was either his job or he had some particular interest and he was on the scene, right? Mm -hmm. Seattle on the spot, well, that was, right. was him. And um, I, I've heard um, Butch Smith, who was in the audience, uh, say something really funny at an earlier event that he knew his dad was headed out to snap pictures in the evening because they could smell his cologne. He slathered on. <laughs> I think he used the word slather. <laughs> so maybe he can expand on that. But um, so here again is uh, another photo that just sort of jumped out of the album. A group of ladies, um, whether they're a particular social group or not, you'll see that in some of these images these ladies are also in, in other photographs that we're going to show you. So if anyone recognizes any of these ladies or in this the photo, mm -hmm. yeah, to please um, let us know. I, I, th I don't think that Mary or Josephine knew any of these ladies, but uh, it just was one of those that, that spoke to me, and so I kind of threw it in there for everyone. I thought they were looking kind of sharp there with the hands on the hips and the mm -hmm. whole uh, Hawaiian night. Now this one, though. Oh, this <laughs> one. <laughs> okay. This one, Josephine, is uh, the founding chapter of the Jack and Jill. And if you look up there, you will see Josephine and you'll see me. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Josephine, do you remember that picture? I think we recognize most of the people on That's there. The me. first person on there is Lillian Gideon in the and corner. I um, think that's you. You know what? That's you. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm up at the top. <laughs> right there. <laughs> and and Mary is on the oh, top row me. also. <laughs> and of course, uh, these ladies here, Lillian Gideon. Yeah, that's Lillian. Joyce Moore, Joyce. Ola Browning. Mm -hmm. Claudine. Uh, Winston. Claudine Winston mm -hmm. and Lizelle Johnson. Right. 
Mm -hmm. uh, Freddie, Freddie Braxton. Braxton. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, uh -huh. And the Gatons, Gila Gaton, uh -huh. Emma Gaton. What year do you, what year do you, what year do you think that was, Mary? Uh, or Justin, probably please, about fifty eight. Probably fifty eight. Oh, probably. was that the year that Jack and Jill was founded? Yes. Here in Seattle. Mm -hmm. Why don't you tell and everybody think, about Jack and Jill? I think these tell ladies them. sitting there at the table. I think they were national officers. They oh. were. Oh. Maybe, yeah. To, okay. Uh, okay. And they came the from San Francisco to um, install the chapter. Yeah. All right. So Jack and Jill is an organization that still exists, right, here in Seattle. Yes, and, and what was the function of Jack and Jill? Jack and Jill was an organization for the children, because I know my husband wanted me to be in Jack and Jill because he says, we do all these things for ourselves, so we need to do something for our children. And so Jack and Jill was an organization that was organized according to the age of your child. And each group had activities during the month uh, for the children. And it, it was basically, but then at the end of the month or something, we would have a family affair where all of the people would come together. So Jack and Jill was basically uh, for, for the children. Okay, so you had scholarship programs and and we oh we we did have um, a debutante ball at the end uh, for our kids and it, and our debutante ball was not just for girls it was for boys and girls it was for anybody who graduated from high school the ball was for that person those uh, kids all right because I I always heard. You know um, all the stories. I I had friends that were in Jack and Jill. I was never in Jack and Jill. Maybe maybe I was a little too rough. I was a little too scrappy. <laughs> I, I I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do know there was another group, uh, the, the Rhinestones. Rhinestones, the Washington Rhinestone Club. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there are any Rhinestone Club members out here in the audience tonight. All right, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but surely they. Um, to encourage the, the academics and mm -hmm. still do um, of young black women. Mm -hmm. So um, it's very important um, in our community to be able to support the education and, and culture. Yes, Jack and Jill people. was a national organization mm -hmm. and um, I was on the national board for Jack and Jill and traveled all over the country to see the different programs that we had for children. For instance, in Pittsburgh, they had a program that started with the children uh, from the lower income uh, part of town, and they took them to the University of Pittsburgh, and they taught them um, you know, before they started school. So Jack and Jill, all over the country, had programs for not only their children, but children in the community. Mm -hmm. And I do know that uh, with the, the Washington um, rhinestones, they have a debutante ball, mm -hmm. right, every year. So all the ladies come out, the young mm -hmm. women. And um, I have to admit, I skipped out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I was supposed to be introduced and I somehow I, I went to the first meeting and I was uh, like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so um, headed off to college and just never came back to Seattle to participate in the ball. <laughs> I think my mom has that gown still, <laughs> you know, <laughs> holding it over my head. So, okay, yes, this is a, a really lovely photo. So and I know Howard's going to be mm -hmm. so happy that All, every, I know. everybody's going to be identified. I know, mm -hmm. so many names. Mm -hmm. I know it. Mm -hmm. And here, uh, this is lovely, too. Uh -huh. Another, um, the house party with friends and couples and family and yeah. I don't know. There's somebody, <laughs> a couple <laughs> people we recognize here and... I see Josephine's husband. There he yes. is. <laughs> there my, he is. my husband was the um, sweetheart of these the ladies' club. <laughs> he, 
he was their, he was their sweetheart before he married me. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they uh, invited us to all of their social affairs. This was called the Vogue Club. Yes. They had uh, fashion shows. And after I married him, they invited me to be the commentator for the fashion shows. And um, they, they had a, a very nice organization. Right. Uh, th when you said Vogue Club, when we were looking at these photos, just, I don't know, just a month ago, Howard Geske had um, sent me a note and said, what do you know about the Vogue Club? Can you give me any information about the Vogue Club? And I'm going, I don't know, the, the Vogue Club, well, who were they, what was that? So I put out a few feelers, didn't get anything back, sit down with you a couple days ago, and then there you go, oh, this is the Vogue Club. <laughs> and so, Howard, you're here tonight, you're going to have to... Um, hook up with Josephine on um, all that info you want on the Vogue Club. There you are. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, I and there it's just such a stylish uh, photo too. The hats, the ladies in the hats, and um, everybody looking pretty sharp. But the other thing here too is look at this setup right here. <laughs> you know what? You know what, what was that about right there? <laughs> so. <laughs> that looked pretty interesting. I must say, uh, when, when my, I have a plant on my coffee table at home that the Vogue Club sent my husband when he was made judge. And I still have that plant. <laughs> right. And Carol and I can attest, we, we saw it. It's beautiful. <laughs> so I don't know how, how many it's years old Vogue. that is. Yeah, still mm -hmm. there. It's lovely. Okay, we're gonna keep moving. Oh, here's another one, and a really great, you, okay, great, Mary. I don't know what this organization is, but I wanted to point out June Smith, who was the president of the local chapter of the NAACP, is that and who she that was is? the grandmother of Kwame Turner, oh. <gasps> who was no. your archivist. Mm. Well, who died last year. Yeah, oh my yeah. gosh. And this is Lietta King. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lietta mm -hmm. uh, And she, her name lives on every Thursday night at the <laughs> Senior Center because uh, the club there is named Lietta King Bridge Club. Right. I don't you. know right. what, the art, what, that what this is all about, but I do mm. know those two people. That's right. awesome. Well, thank you for identifying the um, the woman. You said this was Kwame's here, Kwame Turner's um, grandmother. Grandmother, wow. and Kwame was uh, too a lifelong uh, member and um, huge supporter, um, collections manager uh, at BHS. And we did lose Kwame last year, and yeah. he he lives on in our hearts and. Every time we're in collections, he's for here sure. right now. See, he's yeah, there down. he is, he's right, wanting. right there. Yep. And um, Josephine, you were telling me a really great story about Lietta too, about Lietta King. And uh, I was telling her that Lietta King also taught music. And when my kids were very small, uh, they took music from Lietta, and Le my son wanted to take music because my daughter was taking music. And when my, da the da when my daughter um, left, wanted to, left town, my son wanted to stop taking music. And I said, no, you cannot, <laughs> you can't stop taking music until you get a good foundation. And um, so anyway, Andre kept taking music from Lietta until he went into, um, Junior High, and, yeah. and he tells me nowadays that he's glad that I made him do these things because, <laughs> not, because he got a very good understanding and appreciation of music, but at the time he did not appreciate it. <laughs> he didn't. <laughs> it's funny, because I've heard um, a lot of mention of that name, Lietta King, but I, I'd never seen a photo of her until this one came out of the Al Smith collection, for me anyway, and um, I visit the senior center often, uh, won't talk about the guitar lessons, I think I was telling the other day about the guitar lessons I took there that didn't work, but um, 
the, uh, at the senior center, um, they just hold her in high regard. And I imagine that if they've named a bridge club after her, I don't know what it takes to get a bridge club named after you, but um, <laughs> they must hold her in very high esteem. She was a musician and a music instructor. That's awesome. Okay. And here is um, a little bit of a transition. We're going to move into some, some photos um, of people out on the town and in the club. <laughs> and here, um, there was somebody you recognized, or Josephine. I'm sorry, I, I can't remember. So we were uh, recognized in, in one of these photos. But what really... Is it? Oh, the one, the one next to the lady in the light colored. Oh, this one. Yeah, this lady right uh -huh. here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She's there. And uh, we are trying to get close to um, some of the names of the individuals in this photograph. Mm -hmm. uh, what really speaks to me, and maybe to some of the, the rest of you here too, is how sharp everybody was for an evening out on the town. Uh, I know my mother would say, too, that they never went out without their gloves. The ladies always had their gloves and their hats. And um, there was one story that, that my grandmother used to, to talk about, the gloves, and the gloves that were so important. And um, when the black ladies would go to try on their gloves at Frederick and Nelson, they had to try to buy they had to buy, um, where some of the other customers that were not ladies of color could actually try the gloves, not buy, and then move on to the next pair. So really interesting with the gloves and um, how important um, the gloves were on the scene. So every time I see ladies in gloves, I think of that, that story. That had to be probably in the 1940s downtown Seattle. Okay, and here again, I'm sorry, cranking my neck back. Um, another, fo another photo, um, ooh, what was that? Was that me or you, Carol? Because <laughs> I thought, I, oh, okay. Yeah, don't touch that butt, don't touch that butt. <laughs> it's just like, I know the screen went dark, I was like, okay, we're done, it's over. <laughs> Okay, so um, here again in the club, and um, you can see this This had to be, what, circa 1950s, uh, maybe a little earlier. Um, I don't know, you can tell by the dress. Uh, um, but the cigarettes, right? Everybody has the cigarette in the hand. <laughs> and again, we have this lovely uh, setup. <laughs> going on at the table, everybody's having fun. Um, and in the Al Smith exhibit, um, if you've seen it, you'll know, and if you haven't, um, you will see it. Um, there is a setup, a club setup in the exhibit, and they have what is called the, this was the setup, mm -hmm. right? You go to the club or the cabaret, and uh, you would get your bottle of Coke, Coca-Cola, or 7-Up, and you'd come in with your own bottle, um, set it on the table, and, you know, go at it. <laughs> so, Get to drinking. So this is a lot of fun. And this, this may have been um, at the Black and Tan. Um, I wish that, you know, we were able to, to see um, the background just a little bit more, but it could have been the Black and Tan. And again, here... Um, in the booth at the, the club and the table, the setup, and I kind of uh, tried to get a little close, and I think that's rum and coke <laughs> right there. Um, so again, in the club, and this, um, I wanted to, I'm going to go past that just a little bit, because I wanted to first just give a shout out to Princess Zenobia, mm -hmm. okay, and um, she was an awesome performer and, and dancer um, and what they, they called the shake dancer. Um, but 
has, does anybody know of or heard stories of Zenobia at all in the room? Yeah, maybe one is Howard in the back. But she was a pretty amazing dancer, and she was in Seattle often, but also traveled around to other states and performed um, as a dancer. But she also sang a little bit, too. So she's really lovely. And she was um, in this photo at the Black and Tan. And the Black and Tan being um, one of the hottest clubs in town, the hottest ticket in town. Uh, many performers, jazz performance at the Black and Tan. There's um, going to be another evening with a discussion on the Black and Tan, I think. I, I'm sorry, I don't know what day it is, but if you check your, your um, the Al Smith um, on the spot brochure, the program, you'll see um, a series of events and they'll be talking more on the black and tan. Yeah, mohai.org. Yeah, okay. Too. Thank you, Carol, mm -hmm. for that mm -hmm. plug. <laughs> and I'll just um, shoot back for a minute. And these two are uh, a couple of gentlemen looking very sharp in the club at um, what I think is the Royal Esquire Club. Do we have any Royal Esquires here in the in the house? No, we thought we were gonna try to pepper the audience a little bit with some of those Esquires uh, to pull the story out, but, um, oops, sorry. That is me, that wasn't Carol. <laughs> I can't even bl can't blame that one on Carol. But here are the um, 1949, the Royal Esquires. And the Royal Esquires were a gentleman's club, a men's club, right? A private club. Um, I don't know, I, I don't think they, they asked, or there was a women's auxiliary, but not until um, the 1990s sometime. Um, they were uh, a social group that uh, held events at their club. Um, early in the early years, all the members had keys to the club. Uh, Carol, where, where was the first club? It was, we talked about this, Josephine, the first club, the first Royal Esquire club the, the was, club was uh, it was on 14th. The, the club was, uh, that I think they're probably in front of the building. It's there where the school is right now. It was, okay. but the club was uh, on 14th between um, Yesler and Jackson. Yeah, right near Bailey Gats, where Bailey Gatzer Elementary School. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a, a, an article, a, a good article on History Link about the history of the Royal Esquire Club. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's awesome. Did you support that one too, Mary? You did? Oh, awesome. Great. Mary's all over that history. I link. know all you over History Link. There. Yes, History mm -hmm. Link and BlackPast.org. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. they're two fabulous resources. So mm -hmm. yes. thank you. So we were working on identifying at a previous event some of the men in this photo. I think we've got, you know, maybe one third mm -hmm. of the names uh, here. But if anyone recognizes any of the gentlemen or you think you might have a lead on someone in the early years of the Royal Esquire Club, to please let us know. Um, for me, I can't, I'm stretching my neck because I did know um, Big Daddy Shelby. And he is in there, but I, I can't quite point him out right now. But um, the Esquires, again, were, um, they were contributors and supporters in the community uh, at, for different social groups, social organizations. They, they were givers and not takers, for sure. Um, they're, and they're still going strong. They are still going strong. Mm -hmm. um, their, their club is... It's yeah. on Rainier Avenue South. Rainier, mm -hmm. in uh, Hillman City. Yes. Yes. Columbia City. Well, okay. Uh, yeah, I know. I'm in real estate. I know. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Your neighborhoods mixed up. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah, I still know it is Columbia City too. <laughs> I was trying to be proper. I was trying to, you know. So, uh, so they, the Royal Esquires, um, 
were very instrumental in the early days of the uh, Mardi Gras and the Mardi Gras parade. And we're gonna show you some, some photos uh, of the Mardi Gras parade, but here you'll see these are contestants for the Mardi Gras queen. And Carol, you recognize We, we right? have some contestants do. here in the audience. <laughs> we do, we have some of the contestants what here. Is, oops, did I do that? Yes, you uh, did. Well, can you get I'm gonna take. Okay, I'm sorry. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Bev. Kelly. Yeah, Bev, used to right be Bev there, Washington. Bev. Please stand up. <laughs> stand up, Bev. There she is. <laughs> looking just like she was looking then. Where's, where's, where's Gertrude? This is Francis, Francis Terry. Terry, my neighbor. Mm -hmm. Francis Terry. Mm -hmm. This is Gloria Jenkins. Mm -hmm. This is Joe Lachola. And I believe this is Lombard, um, Leonella Lombard. Is that right, Mom? Mm -hmm. Well, and this is my mama. That's her. <laughs> that's Mrs. Peoples, Gertrude. Awesome. <laughs> you should stand up. There she is. <laughs> I love it. Then and now. Then and now. <laughs> How cute. This is Teresa. Yeah, Frank. Uh, that's Frank, Quincy's. Dana Frank's mama. Mm -hmm. and Quincy. Quincy Jones's sister. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And who is this? Do we, do we I don't know. We're trying to get close to identifying all of them. We didn't. And Vivian Caver. Oh, yeah. Mrs. Caver. Mm -hmm. For sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is, um, so again, the, um, the Mardi Gras, setting the stage here for the Mardi Gras. Um, here are the, the queen and her court. Um, I don't know, Gertrude, was this 1949? Bev, you and, was this 49, 50? You don't remember. <laughs> okay, that was, it had to have been around that, around that time. So the queen um, being Teresa Frank. Yes. And, um, Leonella. Leonella Lombard. Uh huh. And Vivian Caver. Yes. And oh my gosh, look at Bev. Bev, you are lovely. Okay. And here, which was really, um, uh, you know, this was really a wonderful um, time in the central area where uh, we were appreciating not only our culture, but also showing out just a little bit and participating in the festivals and parades and carnivals around town. The sea fair means so much to all of us. Yeah, and, and each community had a shot at making right. it special, so yeah. that's great. And some of these were even uh, pre-Mardi Gras. I mean, there was, originally was the international district festival and parade. And the Mardi Gras queen um, and her court would, um, and the royal esquires, um, they would ride in that parade. And um, then that was, there was a spinoff to the Mardi Gras parade actually um, driving down and parading down 23rd Avenue, uh, Madison Street and 23rd Avenue. So, we're guessing at who this queen is. We don't. We don't uh, know. So again, your help. No, it was. But you were thinking. This is Bill. She was thinking about um, this lady. Yeah, you were saying I can't. That she knew her. Mm -hmm. I can't remember. Miss Mary, her name. do you recognize this lady at all? The the lady in the striped dress. Do you recognize her, Mary? No. Yeah, okay. I didn't. Okay, we all were like, we think we know her. <laughs> that looks like my Aunt B. <laughs> that, like, <you> know, <laughs> that must be somebody I'm related so to. Funny. And that's the funny thing about, you know, with all of these photos and, and looking through them, um, Seattle really is a small pond, you know. And 
uh, I always feel like I'm like two or three degrees away from everyone or I'm related to, to someone. So, you know, that right there, that could be my cousin. I don't know. <laughs> and here, um, we do know that this is the International Center Queen um, with Seafair, and this is Adelia uh, Mickey Avery, who's being crowned here. And this photograph was one that um, the museum put out maybe, ooh, gosh, maybe two years ago, there was a, a PR move with KUOW, and they were asking people to identify individuals and photographs, and this was one of the photographs that they had pulled out, and right away, um, three or four people recognized that this was Mickey, uh, Mickey Avery, uh, Garfield High School grad. Yeah, I'll say that even though I was in Cleveland Eagle, I can still, you know, I'm, I'm fine with it. And again, here, um, the Mardi Gras parade. So um, initially a parade that um, the, uh, I would say the uh, Mardi Gras um, Royal Esquire Club was engaged in along Jackson Street uh, moved to 23rd Avenue and became the Mardi Gras Parade. So here uh, is a float slash car. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what really jumped out for me here is the Safeway store that used to be on 23rd uh, near Union Street. Right. All gone, right? Uh, What's, um, some of it is, it, it, it is sad in some ways, but we have all these really great memories and photographs um, that uh, not only the Al Smith collection, but other collections at the University of Washington and also um, at BHS that um, we can pull out and um, remember and share with future generations. And this, uh, particular area right here now is just a little, I'd say it's just a little north of the corner of, uh, or a little south of the corner at Union Street and 23rd Avenue, which is hugely developed now for any of you that travel that, that area and um, see how significantly um, high rise <laughs> it's becoming. Yeah, but um, the really nice thing about that space is that um, there is some involvement from the African American community to help to try to direct some of the development there. It's kind of a tough road, but um, we're hoping that um, some of the black businesses will come back in um, because, I mean, Carol, you, you remember we talk about this often, and Mary and Josephine, you you probably knew and utilized a lot of the black businesses that were in the central area mm -hmm. at the time, mm -hmm. right? There were cleaners, mm -hmm. uh, record stores, uh, yeah, the five and dimes, mm -hmm. all of it. Um, here, again, uh, Mardi Gras parade, the float. And uh, I had recognized this lady right here as Clotilde, Clotilde Swansea. Mm -hmm. And Clotilde pops up in a lot of um, Al Smith's photos. Clotilde was uh, a fabulous beautician and a uh, person who was well known in the community. So, I was really surprised to see her sitting and waving in this elaborate uh, shingling type <laughs> mm -hmm. car float. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were trying to as well get to some identification of this lady and the other two that you see here. Um, yeah, okay, let's keep moving. Yeah, um, yeah. Just, just really quickly here again, the Royal Esquire Club um, and their car proceeding down um, J 
Jackson Street during the International Festival with Jesse Grimes as their queen um, on the back. Okay, and we want to be able to take um, some time here too um, because what's really important is that we have these really great places that are named for, for black people um, in the central area and around Seattle too. This is a list of the parks that are in the um, Seattle central area. But uh, Mary wrote a really fabulous book, a tribute, and um, she would like to, to share with us just some insights for a couple of these people. So Mary, let's just take it away. Okay, thank you. Well, it has been 20 years since I wrote this little book, Tribute. Seattle Public Places Named for Black People. And my daughter-in-law, Marilyn, illustrated it. At that time, there were 22 places in Seattle named for black people. Today, there are over 30. Some of them are named for national and international figures like Martin Luther King, Medgar Evers, Frederick Douglass, Sojourner Truth, Thurgood Marshall, Langston Hughes, Paul Robeson, and Quincy Jones. But tonight, I would like to tell you about our local black citizens who lived and worked in the central area, who contributed to our cultural and civic life and are honored with landmarks. Two of the earliest settlers in the central area were William Gross and Powell Barnett. Gross arrived in Seattle less than a decade after the Denny party and was the second black person to live here. He was a big man in body and in spirit, a businessman who bought property in East Madison and established a black community. There's a park named for him which sprawls between 30th and 31st Avenues East on Howell. In 1983, the Black Heritage Society placed a bronze identification plaque with his image there. Paul Burnett arrived in Seattle in 1906 from Roslyn, where his father had been a strike breaker in the coal mines. He lived in the Leshai area, organized its Improvement Council, which today is a vibrant and strong group. And he was its first president. He worked to improve race relations and civic unity. And the large park on Martin Luther King with its colorful slides and swings is named in his honor. It was the children at Leshai School who suggested his name. It was also the children there who named the charming little park east of the school for Pepe. This seven-year-old seven schoolmate, Pepe Braxton, was killed while riding his bicycle in front of his home. Civic activists received their share of honors Flo Ware was a fighter for children, the elderly and the poor. She was the organizer of the Central Area School Board and the Foster Parents Association because she raised 20 foster children. And she spearheaded Meals on Wheels. The Flo Ware Park is on Jackson and 28th. Carolyn Downs, a Garfield grad who died at the early age of 25, became passionately involved with the Black Panthers because of her interest in helping black people in the central area. She was active in the organization of the Sidney Miller Free Clinic, the forerunner of the family medical center named in her honor, which is located at 21st and Yesler. Edwin Pratt, was the executive director of the Seattle Urban League and a committed integrationist who believed that the problems of race could only be solved through integration. He fought for the integration of Seattle schools 
and for open housing. One snowy night in 1969, he was killed by an unknown assassin in his home. The Pratt Fine Arts Center is located at 20th and Main, near the Edwin Pratt Park at 20th and Yesler. Politicians contributed to the well-being of our community as well. Judge Charles Stokes, Josephine's husband, Stephanie's father, a civil rights activist was the first black legislator from King County and later became the first black person to be appointed judge to the King County District Court. While in the legislature and before his time, he introduced a bill for a state lottery, which of course did not pass. But he co-sponsored the Civil Rights Omnibus Bill. The Park Department's Charles Stokes Overlook is on the western end of the I-90 lid, near one of the first homes of the Stokes. Sam Smith was the first black person to be elected to the Seattle City Council and the second black legislator from King County. While in the council, he prevented the increase in utility rates, knowing that low income residents could not afford them. And he pressed for the hiring of black firefighters and policemen. In 1968, he sponsored the open housing bill which passed unanimously. The large park over the I-90 tunnel is named in his honor. Humanitarians also shared the spotlight. Alva Rita Little was a woman with a vision. She recognized the need for a place for girls after school. Beginning with only seven girls and a picnic at Saltwater Beach, her energy and expertise enabled her to purchase property for a facility dedicated to girls. The Alva Rita Little Center for Girls is located on Martin Luther King, one block north of Cherry, and it is run by the YWCA today. Meredith Matthews was a friend to youth and the executive director of the East Madison YMCA. Under his leadership, a new facility was built in 1965 and named for him. The only YMCA in greater Seattle that is named for a person. Mr. Matthews died from injuries after a robbery and assault in 1992. Then there are the business people who have received recognition. Russell Gideon came to Seattle in 1946 and opened a drugstore on East Madison. He was the organizer of the Central Area Mardi Gras festivals. And because of his interest in the elderly, he built a senior residence named for his mother, Elizabeth James, near 23rd and Madison. The residence for low-income seniors at Jackson and 24th is named the Gideon Matthews Gardens for him and Henrietta Matthews, a social worker and wife of Meredith Matthews. Prentice Frazier was another early settler who came to Seattle in 1916 and became a prominent businessman operating in real estate, bail bonds, and insurance he helped to establish the Black and Johnson Undertakers on East Madison and opened the Anzir Theater in 1925. The small park at 24th and Harrison is named for him. And presently, it is under uh, construction, reconstruction. There is a small park being developed across the street from Mount Zion Baptist Church named for Horace Caton, the publisher of the Seattle Republican newspaper printed from 1894 until 1927. The naming of 19th Avenue between <coughs> Union and Republic has been designated Reverend Samuel McKinney Way 
in honor of the civil rights leader and longtime pastor, pastor of Mount Zion Baptist Church. Ernestine Anderson Wade runs a few blocks on Jackson and is named for the prominent jazz singer. Then there are the teachers. There is a quiet park on 34th Avenue in the Modrona neighborhood named for Al Larkins, a beloved teacher at Franklin High School, a musician, a man with an enormous capacity for friendship who contributed much to his Madrona neighborhood. And a bronze plaque of identification and his portrait was placed there by the Black Heritage Society with the help at that time of Madrona resident and Black Heritage Society member, Francis Carr. Mm -hmm. And I have just recently on Sunday been informed by Stephanie that the old Central Area Motivation Project building on 18th has been named for Roberta Bird Barr. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Roberta was a teacher, librarian, the first woman in the history of the Seattle Public Schools to head a high school, a television personality, a civil rights leader, mm -hmm. and an actress. She performed in Raising in the Sun, Raisin in the Sun in the early 60s at the Old Cirque Theater in Madrona. She was a multi-talented woman who deserves this honor. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Lastly, there are the healthcare people. Odessa Brown Children's Clinic on Yesler is named for our community organizer for the Central Area, Mo Central Area Motivation Project, whose one passion was for the, a healthcare facility for children. And when she died of leukemia, leukemia, there was no question but the clinic be named for her. The pediatrician, Dr. Blanche Levizo, <coughs> was a dear friend of mine who died much too young. She was the first black pediatrician in the city and the first medical director of the Odessa Brown Children's Clinic. She is credited with its motto of quality care with dignity. There is a water play park on Yesler bearing her name, as well as a walkway from Jackson through to an amphitheater behind the clinic. Dr. Homer Harris <coughs> Park is located at 24th and Ollie, across the street from the Meredith Matthews wide MCA and the early home of William Gross. Dr. Harris was a native son, a Garfield grad, the first black dermatologist in the state, and a football hero. His friend Stimson Bullitt donated the property to the Seattle Park Department. I might add, Dr. Harris was one of the most handsome men yeah. in Seattle. <laughs> He was my yeah. dermatologist. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and as a friend of mine used to say, the sight of him would make your day. <laughs> Just saying. So I hope that as you pass these parks and buildings and streets, that you will be reminded of those people who lived and worked in the central area and contributed so much to the quality of life there and to the greater Seattle community. Mm -hmm. I just love Mary Hip. <laughs> We're so lucky to have you, Mary Henry. Oh my goodness. I know, it's a, fabulous. And when she said it was how many years since um, this book? Mary, 20, 1997. 20. Okay. So, uh, yeah, we have been talking about it's time to, you know, do a little revised. And she's looking at her copy. family. I know, illustrators, you know. Um, so I think that um, 
what would really be great too, Mary, is that. Well, uh, I've already suggested to okay. my son and oh, my daughter-in-law oh, okay. that when they retire, they could take up this project and uh, update the book. It could happen, <laughs> right? <laughs> is, they're like going. <laughs> That would be fabulous, and I think that um, as there are places and parks being developed throughout the central area, that I would encourage uh, everyone to suggest the names of those black people that were the uh, people who were vital to the community and were those who were the lifters and the movers and shakers of the community to name those places. Um, uh, I'd those like new to places. add too that there are other places outside of the central area that are named for black people. True. There's a Walt Hundley Playfield in West Seattle. Right. There is a Thelma DeWitty Auditorium in the old Cooper's uh, School. Thelma DeWitty was the first <coughs> black teacher in Seattle Public Schools. Mm -hmm. And then there is the uh, Paul Robeson Auditorium at Rainier oh. Beach High School. Right. Mm -hmm. And then of course the Quincy Jones Auditorium. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, well, and there the is a Gossard okay, she's got that says she a Larry Gossett apartment for low income people in the university district. Wait, the Larry Gossett and Apartments? A, I didn't and a Tyree Apartments for low-income people in Rainier Valley. Well, see that little green book? I think it could be more like about the big green book. Yes. So, um, okay, well, we can, we'll talk about that, right? BHS, that'll be a, yes. one of our initiatives. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, now, Howard standing over there. Are you just standing over there? Or you get trying to <laughs> is it? I know, you know, we are like, I, I was going to try to watch the time, but I'm not doing so good. How am I doing, Rachel? I, it's 8, 18, oh, so if there's okay. any questions. Yeah, I, I know there's so much to be able to cover because I, I had like, you know, this little notebook full of notes and, and other little nuggets that I was going to share, <laughs> but um, we're already... Uh, nearly through this program and we haven't had any opportunity to take any questions so we'd be happy to take any questions uh, I'm sure Josephine and Mary would would love it is there are there any questions oh okay please oh Okay, we're gonna get you. We're gonna get you, uh, Mike. Be, just. Given that Al Smith Sr. Yeah. Was born down near Pioneer Square, um, lived several places, but settled um, in the CD, and then finished out his life in Montlake. And given the tremendous contribution he has made to the community, what specifically, you talked about parks and having places named for people, who specifically do we contact and what do we need to do? Is it a, is it a city council person or what do we need to do? For, to, I'm sorry, to name places? Oh, in order to, your, to name places? Um, there is a process within the city of Seattle, you know. Uh, anybody who's, uh, who's, who's dealt with the city of Seattle and, uh, and naming places. Often these places were named from suggestions either by organizations, by neighborhoods, mm -hmm. by churches, mm -hmm. by schools. Mm -hmm. But they had to be uh, approved by the Seattle Park Department. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, there, there is that process, but what we do know is that when the community comes together and supports something like that, that then you can make things happen. 
So um, if you have something in mind, um, you know, come to BHS. We'll be your community. You know, we, uh, this, this day before Valentine's Day, we love you. So, it's Mardi Gras too. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so yeah, we, we'd love to help out with, uh, with something like that. We have another question right toward the back. I have a question, and I, most of you know me. First of all, Ms. Henry, I read your book, and I thought it was fascinating, but here's, this is more of a recommendation than a question. I think it would be a nice investment if you were to contact Four Cultures about updating the book. I think it'll make a good project because the Central District has been designated as a part of the Central Area, a historic, designated area of the city of Seattle. I think as much as you have uh, people trying to engage young people, here's an opportunity for a partnership to be created with uh, Coyote Central and their young people that do a lot of art projects. Uh, Dr. Claudia Stell, I'm sure she would love to uh, put some of her young people to work on updating your book and therefore you don't have to burden your children. I think, uh, <laughs> I think in addition, it will represent a learning tool for young people. So that's uh, my recommendation. You know, you may want to explore some options. Four Cultures, Four Culture has money to do these kind of projects, and at the same time, it will create uh, opportunities for young people to get a stipend. It will create learning tools for them, and that's uh, my recommendation. Thank Good show. You. Thank you. Because, I, I, you know, that's a great recommendation because I think that Mary's first book was partially funded by Four Culture, so they know her very well. So uh, sounds like a great opportunity to me. Thanks for the suggestion. That's awesome. Okay, any other questions? Um, I, I know that, oh, what's that? Another? Hello. Sorry, um, I'm a teacher in an elementary school in Seattle, and um, recently I was reading a book that had a line that really inspired me that said, you cannot lead students into excellence if you do not know the excellence from which they come. And uh, that spoke to me a lot about really educating myself about the history of, uh, of my students' families and, and the cultures from which they come. Uh, particularly within Seattle and not just on a national landscape. Um, and I was just wondering what advice you might give uh, a teacher like myself who's looking to, uh, to deepen my knowledge and then provide that for my students. Okay, I'm sorry. Is... <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, I want to be able to re repeat that for Mary, but... Can you, like? <laughs> mm -hmm. I think it's um, asking if there are resources to learn more about the history of the central area and advice for teaching students um, who come from, who've grown up there or? To access those resources? Just advice, sorry. <laughs> yeah, just curious about advice that you might have uh, so that I can, I can be better educated and my yeah. students therefore would have access to uh, some of the knowledge that, that you and others have been able to amass. Right, well, you know, that's one of the things that we talk about at BHS all the time is to, um, to try and promote our programs and our resources much better than what, what we do now because we hold an extensive collection um, and I don't think enough people know, and teachers particularly know, what's, what's there. And it is a public resource, and you do have access. So we'll do a much better job of that. And, um, of course, at Mohai, um, University of Washington, and uh, uh, I'd also and Mary. like to suggest uh, historylink.org, yeah. which has a yeah. huge... Uh, backlog of information about black people. Mm -hmm. Also, Quintar, uh, Quintar Taylor's Black Pass, blackpast.org. Mm -hmm. They're both really great resources. Yeah. 
online. And then we mentioned earlier that, that Mary and um, also Jackie Lawson and some of our other historians write for um, both of those online resources. So um, I think with, with all, uh, one more? Okay, or two more, okay. Good evening. I want Hi. to thank you for coming out and sharing with us with the pictures and the history of the central area. I'm a retired teacher, and in response to the, sick, the suggestion of the comment made by the lady over there, one of my favorite projects I used to do for my students, or had my students do, was I had them to find their family history, to find the stories. Mm -hmm. And what I had discovered over the, year was, over the years were many of my students had not talked to their parents, their grandparents, and the members of their church. So my project always was the students had to go find somebody who was about their age at any time they wanted in the history of Seattle and interview them and share that information. And they could tape it, they could do artwork, they could do any kind of way that they wanted to pull it together, come back and share it with the class. And then that became a part of their family archives. That was the most wonderful project because the kids started seeing that as black students living in the central area, they too were a part of the history and the development of the community. So as a teacher over there, I would suggest that you, in finding the richness of what the students bring, is give them an assignment to tell them to start finding their stories. Doesn't have to be long, could be about one particular incident, but it's something then that they can build on over the years. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, we, we love that idea because we were just making a, had just made a recent connection with um, Centralia, Washington, and the uh, celebration around George Bush and George the, Bush. George, George, George Bush. Mm -hmm. I, oh my God! Not that George Bush. No, there's another. There's, there's a black George Bush, but not. There even is a black George Bush. There is a black George Bush. But George the George of Bush Washington, and then there is also George Washington. Washington the founder of Centralia. Oh, boy. <laughs> so, um, but we we have this really wonderful relationship with going on with um, Centralia Washington and and celebrating George Washington. So yes, um, the curriculum building and all of it is, is a fabulous idea. Outreach in the community um, programming and hopefully one of, one of our um, visions at BHS is to have our own online curriculums um, for K through 12. So, okay. One, one, one last question. question here. Oh. So I was. Oh, I'm sorry, there, okay. It's a short one. Is it microphone? Yeah. Yeah. So um, I'm from the East Coast, uh, where Black Greek letter organizations are are more like have a pretty big presence. And I was just curious, as you were talking about some of the societies in Seattle, uh, what presence did the Black Greek letter organizations have during uh, during this period? Okay, Carol. Yeah, we're we're having a hard time hearing that question. All right, so I'm from the Thank East you. Coast where black Greek letter organizations have a, a pretty major presence. And so I was just curious, as you were talking about some of the societies that existed and still exist in the Seattle area, what presence did the black Greek letter organizations have? Mm -hmm. it, there's a big, there's a big um, presence. I know my sons went to Kappa League, which the Kappa brothers put together an after school program for high school kids. Um, all the Greeks do different things. We have a strong Greek community here. Just plug yeah. in. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think the question was historically, what role did the yeah, Greek community play? We, yeah, I think that we, and we could just like go on all night. If we just take one more, just one more quick one, and then. Um, 
Not really a question, but I wanted to make sure you um, noted Northwest African American Museum as a resource. And if you can tell us some of the resources they have, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, sorry. Well, I'm sorry, I didn't hear. You wanted the Northwest African American oh. Museum and what is its resource and what kinds of resources? Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, I, uh, the Northwest African American Museum that's just celebrating its 10th anniversary uh, this year, uh, opened in 2008. Uh, the museum is now uh, very thrilled and happy that we have a new executive director, Lanisha DeBartolaban. Um, we would encourage all of you to come out and, and hear her vision for the museum that the entire um, staff supports there. You'll see more programming, particularly on the education end coming out of the Northwest African American Museum, but there's also other great uh, programming from there that are conversations, community conversations. Um, the Youth Curator Program, I, I do lead that project. Um, it's a fabulous uh, project. It's once a year where 14 to 18 year olds are um, come out and learn museum studies and participate in particular projects. And we're actually working with MOHAI on a, a current project, a digital photography project, uh, taking our inspiration from the Al Smith collection. So uh, I would invite everyone to come out to the Northwest African American Museum. Well, in closing, I want to thank Mary Henry again for all that you've done for our community, making sure that we are not forgotten. And I, I have been loving on your book since you wrote it. And I'm one of the ones that definitely want to see the second edition. Um, I want to mention that I used Stephanie Stokes Oliver's book to do research on her mother. We have another author here in the building. Stephanie, would you mind standing? She has a brand yeah. new book out called Blank <laughs> Ink. Well, this is a very talented woman from this fa same family. These mamas were really doing what they were supposed to be doing. And um, thank you, Bob, for bringing your mom and making sure that she was taken care of and we made sure her needs were met because she is just mm -hmm. a joy. Mm -hmm. And we're glad she was able to make it. Now, I just have to do a public flogging. I got balled out for inviting them, but wasn't it worth it? <laughs> I can take it now. <laughs> Just ball me out again, because this was well worth it. Yeah, this was a, I have to add, yeah, so it was really fabulous evening, um, and just um, the pre meetings that we had that everyone didn't get an opportunity to sit in on with <laughs> Josephine and, and Mary were really, They're, you know, Fabulous. First class. They so have so much. They handled it beautifully. Thank right. you. Thank you, Howard. Thank you, Butch. Oh, yeah. I was Thanks gonna, for the partnership. Yeah. I just want to say, because some of those people that are behind the scenes at Mohai that are the people that support BHS um, almost every day, and, and that is Howard. That's Rachel, Nicole. that's Nicole, Rachel. that's Kathleen, Adam, yes. um, Kelsey, who helped to put together the, the slides, and um, just really fabulous group that supports BHS at our resource center that is in the Mohai facility in Georgetown, yes. uh, the Jackie Lawson Resource Center. Yes. So, uh, mm -hmm. so, so much thank you, uh, Carol, that's do you? It. Yeah, thank, thank you, you to you, Carol. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Thanks and I, I want to chime in and thank, and thank both Carol and Stephanie so much for moderating tonight, as well as reiterating a thank you for um, both Josephine and Mary for sharing your expertise. Yeah. So thank you again to everyone, and thank you all for coming out to Mohai tonight. Please come back if you haven't had a chance to see the Seattle on the Spot exhibit. It is beautiful. It will be up till the end of June. Come back and see that. And as mentioned in the program earlier, we are doing a program two weeks from now on the 27th of February on the Black and Tan. So if you can't get enough of history, please come back. Have a lovely evening, everyone. Thank you.